Sam Sheridan from Sheridan Computers. We've um, just had a Unify 8-port switch turn up, which I'm going to take a look at. Uh, if you'd like to hire us for any networking projects, please head over to our website at sheridan.co.uk, click on the Hire Us button, fill out the form, provide some details on what you're looking for, and we'll get back to you with whether we can help or not. Um, if you like this video, please um, take the time to hit the like button, it does help us, and consider subscribing to the channel, and also if you hit the notification icon, you'll get notifications of uh, any new videos that are released. So if we uh, switch over and take a look at which switch we do actually have, it's this. It's an 8-port managed gigabit switch. This one is the US 860 watt. It's an 8-port gigabit switch with four 802 3AF PoE ports. Its auto-sensing PoE ports deliver up to 15.4 watts of power per port. Um, the US 8 is a PoE-powered 8-port gigabit switch with PoE pass-through, perfect for cleanly adding Ethernet ports where needed, with pass-through to keep your PoE device powered. And um, we can see the images of them. As I say, I'm going to take this one out of the box in a minute and we'll take a look at it. Uh, it has a non-blocking throughput of 8 gigabits and it has a uh, switching capacity of 16 gigabits. And it integrates with the Unify software, which is why we got the switch. So if we uh, flick over to the actual switch that's arrived. So let's uh, do this. So in the box, we have the instruction manual, the switch itself, which is uh, well packed, and also we have the power supply. Get it out, and some uh, securing screws. So the power supply that has arrived is a uh, US one. Um, we did have a, we did order a UK one, luckily as well. Just there for a second. So this switch, um, it's completely aluminium, um, and it's a fair bit of weight in it. It's actually quite a nice looking switch, as you can see on the front. We have uh, four PoE ports. Um, clearly marked and the four non-PoE ports here. Uh, on the back we have the power which is 48 volts DC um, and obviously the grills on the side for the ventilation. Um, as I say it is complete with steel, there is a, it's not heavy but you know it's heavier than a lot of uh, eight port switches that I've had to play with in the past. So I'm going to power it up and we'll adopt it and take a look at it. Okay, let's power this up. Oh, you can see the uh, blue lights now come on. Um, while it's booting. Uh, as you can see on the top, we've got the link light status as well. Um, Obviously, not lit is down. Uh, amber is 10 stroke 100, and gigabit is green. And on the top, it shows the PoE status, uh, which is off. Orange 48 volt. So, as you can see, we have the blue light. We're just uh, waiting for it to finish booting. So now it's flashing white. Pending adoption, so now we should be able to adopt this. Um, we do have it set up so it should automatically appear in the dashboard. So let's head over and take a look at the dashboard. And it's here, so we can see the switch is there. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and adopt this. saying adopting update required so we'll do an update on this while we're here as well so now as you can see on the front of this um, the status light on the side has now gone blue um, standard Unify stuff so we can see that he's now adopted Let's head up back over to the control panel see where we're up to 
So now it's changed to updating, so it's downloading the update. Currently at version 3.9.549373, so this should change shortly. Now it's changed to update writing, so we can see that the update's been downloaded and it's now just flashing the firmware. And as we can see by looking at the front of the switch, it's now um, alternating colours, I don't know if you can see that properly. That's showing that the firmware is being flashed. And now... <clears throat> So now as you can see the uh, status light went off there for a second and the switch is booting back up again. So we've just got a solid blue status at the moment and we can see it's not booted because we've got no link lights on the top. So as soon as we get our link lights up we can um, log back into the controller and take a look at the actual um, software configuration. So now it's flashing again. So we're pending the adoption again, and it's adopted. And now you can see our link status, we've gone green, so we should have a connection back to our controller. Head over and take a look at the controller. And that's showing updating. And now it's provisioning the um, settings. Okay, it's provisioned, so we can see it's IP address, it's MAC address, uh, CPU usage, memory usage, um, and the general status that you can usually see, so we can see the uh, traffic up and down. Um, if you take a look at the actual switch itself, uh, again we can see the MAC address, uh, the version has now gone up to 4.0.80.10875 which is uh, current as of the 14th of February, 2020. We can see it's uh, IP address, temperature, has no temperature sensor, uptime, memory usage, uh, which is now at 49%, and we can see the load. Uplink, speed, um, up bytes, down bytes, and activity, and downlinks, we've got no downlinks. Um, so we can go into clients, and see what clients are connected. Um, ports allows you to see the port status and as you can see these don't have PoE these first four ports. Um, the second four ports, ports five to eight, do have PoE. Um, just in case you're curious this switch will not power up by PoE. There is um, it's the US Flex version, which can be powered by PoE, but this is PoE out only, and it does require to be powered by mains. Um, so if we take a look at the port options, so we can obviously give it a name. It's pretty much the same as any other Unify switch. We can select the switch profile, um, Mac filters, profile overhead. We can have it to switching, or we can have the port mirroring or aggregate. Um, auto negotiation, we can enable port isolation uh, and it's got storm control on it as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty much the same settings as any other Unify switch. We go into the configuration, we can set its alias, um, set to use site settings, we can add tags. Um, tags are a really cool way to identify your device, so you can put a tag in as like downstairs or you know the location of the device so you can easily identify it. Yeah, again it has VLAN support, jumbo frames, um, flow control, it's got um, RSTP, uh, STP, or you can be disabled, priority, um, 8021X control, it does have um, SNMP so you can monitor it. If we look at the network, 
We can configure the IP address uh, DHCP, which is default out of the box. Um, or we can set a static IP address where you can set the uh, preferred DNS, subnet mask, gateway, etc, etc. We'll just leave that as it is. Manage the device, again, same as uh, other unified switches. Um, you, know, you can force provision in, forget the device, move it. Um, if look under tools, open the debug terminal. And notice here we've got the stats. So I guess we should um, strip it down and take a look inside it. So you can see on the bottom of it, it does have um, mounting, so it can be mounted to a wall if necessary, or whichever way you're going to do it. Now we've got the earth strap on the back. I'm going to go ahead and um, take these out. Now the case is a little warm, so I'm guessing it's it's passive cooled. Obviously, there's no fans in it, so it's very quiet. Um, but the case is a bit warm, so you can feel that. So to open the case, basically slide it forward. It's off. So first thing to note. Obviously, these are linked to the LED status lights at the top, so you know you need to be careful when you're taking it off um, that you don't pull these. You see, there's no fans or anything inside this; it's completely passively cooled. Um, and this heat sink is flush to the case, and because it's flush to the case, it's using the case um, as part of the heat sink. Um, solid switch, all of the inside of it's pretty uh, used. Let's say that's got a bit of weight in it as well. So let's go ahead and put this back together. As you can see, it went back exactly the same way we took it apart. Slide the lid back on and stick the screws back in. And that is it for this video. Um, so we've uh, took a quick look at it, we've uh, powered it up, we've adopted it, we've had a look through the settings, um, and we took it apart just for fun of it to have a look inside. Um, so yeah, it's a solid little switch. Um, if you'd like to hire us, please head over to our website and uh, hit the hire us button as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, if you did find this video useful, please uh, do take the time to hit the like button. Um, we'll see you in the next video.